Welcome back to designing our LNA. This is part five, and we're going to start developing our design right here. Um, in this sec segment, uh, what I have here is our bias T configuration that we used in the previous segment, and we're going to use this to look a little bit more closely at stability and how we may want to match to the device. Uh, to do that, we're going to take advantage of the flexibility that the AWR design environment provides for the port element. The port element is not just the uh, link into hierarchy. In other words, if I want to embed this mimic in a larger design, put in a test bench port is what I use to do that. It also allows us to vary the impedance so it's much like a termination as well as a hierarchy element. So here I'm representing our uh, termination impedance Z uh, with two variables real and imaginary. I'm using the uh, J here to present the imaginary value so this is a complex value here and uh, we're going to tune on this in a moment but there's additional flexibility that you have with the port in the AWR design environment. What I can do for the port element is change it from just a plain old termination and hierarchy element those things plus a swept power source or any sort of source for that matter for nonlinear simulation. So let's sweep this from minus 15 dB to plus 15 dB and 1 dB steps. So in addition to using it in this manner I could simultaneously do S parameter measurements on this by using this very same port at the same time that I'm doing the nonlinear measurements at the same time that I'm doing the hierarchy. So port is a very flexible element in the uh, AWR design environment. Let's quickly do our P1 measurement and we can see that we can drive this uh, pretty well to about uh, 20 dBm out before we're going to see some compression. Uh, let's uh, switch back. Uh, this is for our 60 by 50 micron EFET. Let's uh, switch back to the linear uh, aspect of this design. So the first thing I'm going to do is instead of just looking at our single frequency of 5.8 gigahertz, we're going to reload the project frequencies for the schematic from DC to about 10 gigahertz. And we don't want to be doing that nonlinear simulation. So we're going to disable this while we're looking at our linear. We don't want to be tuned. We're going to be tuning a, a little bit. And we don't want to be uh, waiting the extra two or three seconds um, in this video. You might want to wait the extra two or three seconds when you're using your design, but for the sake of this video, we'll do it a little bit more quickly. Uh, and the other thing that we're going to do is go back to our design and changes back to a, just a regular port. Uh, that's uh, just as easy as changing the name of the symbol right on the schematic. There you go, we have our linear port again. So let's look, look at st uh, stability for this guy here and uh, we'll simulate. And uh, we can see right off that we're going to have some problems. Uh, we want our K value to be uh, greater than 1 and our uh, B1 to be greater than 0. You can uh, see here that we're okay with uh, B1, but in terms of K, we're, we're in trouble. We're pretty much below 1 across the band. Uh, now we can go to our tuning and see what kind of uh, sensitivity or um, uh, design parameters we can expect to be able to um, use to get this to happen. Here's our tuning. So if we tune over the imaginary, we can see that we can bring B1 in very nicely by making this more or less reactive. And that's sort of what we expect um, because of the um, small signal model of the FET. We'll go into that in a moment here. And if we change the real impedance, which is something we probably don't want to do because that's going to require that we put a resistor in which is going to raise our noise figure. Uh, likewise you can see that, um, well you can see that there's no sensitivity really there uh, but we have quite a bit of sensitivity. So we're going to look at some reactive matching to get us to where we want to be. Um, now what's the nature of that reactive matching? Well, We can look at uh, a small signal model of our device. Uh, let's model the input as a series resistance and capacitance. This is reasonable given what we know about FETs. Uh, when they're operating in their uh, regime below FT, we can expect that CGS is going to dominate the gate source capacitance in a small signal common source configuration. We'll have uh, a dominant capacitance value. There'll be a small amount of resistance representative of the uh, current flowing through the gate, however small that might be, the RF current, as well as a small component of source resistance, uh, a little loss in the source. So we can model this as a series uh, RC and if this is a good model over our frequency range we should see a fairly constant value for capacitance and that is indeed what we see here roughly one picofarad of capacitance for our device. So we can use this as a working model. Um, if we saw a highly varying value for capacitance then we may want to consider some sort of distributed design but because we see a constant value we're going to be thinking about reactively matching this with an inductor. Uh, the benefit of that in our LNA design is that we don't have to put a resistor uh, in a matching configuration or feedback configuration um, which will uh, give us an additional contribution to the front end noise figure which is something we want to stay away from. 
um, by just being able to match this capacitance, we're going to be able to um, get a good noise figure. Uh, so given that, let's uh, look at a topology that may be able to get us there. Now given the concerns about uh, the K and the B1 um, that we had, uh, just trying to match that device and the insensitivity that we had, rather than going with a single stage design, I've gone with a two stage design here. And what I'm hoping um, as we explore this design is that by using this topology, we can use the reactive match of a uh, shunt inductor to resonate out that capacitance. Um, additionally, uh, this capacitor over here will provide us some blocking at the low end so that we kind of decrease our noise bandwidth and hopefully improve the overall noise figure of our system. Um, I've got some resistive match after our first uh, FET. Uh, hopefully we'll have enough gain out of this first FET here that these resistors won't really impact the noise figure of the overall LNA that much. Um, and we can get a, a good match that's going to give us uh, some decent gain and some decent noise figure. So to start with, let's uh, look at the stability that this is going to give us. We'll go back into our stability measurements that we had set up for the uh, bias T EFET as a single stage, and we'll turn on all of these measurements. We'll go look at what, uh, what that has in store for us here. So if we look at the stability for all these, we can see now that uh, K for our two-stage amplifier is uh, well above zero. Um, so we've achieved our goal of creating a topology which is going to get K off the ground there, if you will. And we've also got a B1 now that uh, is similarly greater than 1 across uh, most of the band that we would be of interest in. Now, uh, down here we may have some issue. We need to take a look at that as our design evolves. But uh, the topology here is going to give us a B value that's greater than 1, really all the places that we're concerned about. Uh, the next thing that we're going to want to do is uh, go in to our um, design and start looking at some of the sensitivity so we can get a feel for uh, how we're going to achieve our performance. In other words, what things do we really want to play around with in our design uh, that are going to reduce the risk of the design but give us the uh, ability to achieve that low noise figure and high gain that we're looking for. So the first thing we should probably look at is this front end match and we'll get the tuning element out and we'll uh, tune on our capacitance and our inductance. You can see I already have some values here, so maybe that will uh, provide a clue as to what I've been doing before the uh, record button went on the video here. And let's start playing around with some of these uh, resistance values as well. Okay, And we'll go back to our stability graph and bring up the tuner. Now the object of this exercise is, if you remember that spiral design model, what we really want to do is start exploring the design space using these five parameters as our good starting point. Uh, a little bit of, is, of this is based on experience, and a little bit of this is, is based on just sort of common sense, what things we really want to look at. We'll get rid of our uh, tuning variables from the stability uh, measurements, and now let's, uh, let's just start uh, playing around with some of these values. If I start moving L1, back and forth, you can see the effect that's going to have on our value for B1, okay? So it's very, very sensitive, and it's very easy to push this down really close to that value of 1 there, which is going to give us some, some heartache. But you can see how playing with that input matching inductor is going to allow us to kind of uh, put the match in a, in a comfortable place or an uncomfortable place. And later on, we'll look at the effect of this on noise figure and, um, and gain. But for now, we're just going to focus on getting this thing stable. Um, similarly for capacitance, it also tends to play around with B1. And in fact, look, we can right there, we can get it to be unstable. And uh, we can play around with the uh, resistance in the uh, grain one of the devices there. Actually, this is the bias resistor for the second stage, and it's relatively insensitive. Maybe a little bit there on B1. And we can see that the R for the first stage has incredible sensitivity to K. And in fact, we can, if we push this high enough, get unstable there on B1. And similarly for the resistance value in our last stage, there's a similar amount of sensitivity maybe a little bit less so. Okay, so we really don't have to worry about our um, bias resistor R2 all that much, so we can eliminate that as long as it's large enough um, to get uh, to get a bias voltage in there without uh, sucking away too much RF power. And we're just kind of left with these four variables uh, to play around with. 
Now let's um, look at what our gain and noise figure are going to look like. And I've uh, kept our B1 here as well. So we have our gain, and we have our noise figure, and B1. So we could see that we're in the current configuration after I played around with those values a little bit. We're stable in terms of B1, and, and K was much less sensitive. We weren't very close there, so we're going to ignore that for the time being. So you can see our design is stable. We have a decent amount of gain. Um, up around 5.8 gigahertz, which is our target value, we have 19.5 dB. And uh, in terms of noise figure, we're down around uh, 1.3, 1.4 dB. Now, I have to caution you, this is an ideal design. Uh, we are using ideal inductors. The idea is just to explore the design space and get a feel for where our sensitivities are and what uh, target values or initial values we may want to start with as we begin to start implementing the design. Uh, in the later... Uh, videos that are going to come after this one. We're going to look at these in more detail as we begin to refine the design and as we start to implement these things in terms of a layout and a layout that's verified. Uh, we're going to start to look at how the different aspects of implementing an actual physical design is going to impact these things. If you'd like more information about some of the things I've shown you, the uh, flexibility of the port, the ability to get small signal model parameters from doing the S-parameter analysis, uh, the sensitivity analysis that I've done here, or the nonlinear uh, harmonic balance sweep that I did. I encourage you to look at other AWR TV videos. There's additional information on the AWR Corp uh, website, uh, the knowledge base, white papers, examples, that sort of thing. Uh, if you'd like even more information, I encourage you to contact your AWR sales professional.